Time now for Michigan's number one outdoor radio show, Mike Avery's Outdoor Magazine. Outdoor Magazine is brought to you by Jay's Sporting Goods, the Yider Insurance Group, Forward Corporation and T.R. McTaggart, Angler Quest Boats, Security Credit Union, Garber Chevrolet, and by Michigan Brand Meats. Now, here's Mike Avery. Well, thank you for that uh, introduction, Ken Hunter, and welcome to our number three of this week's Outdoor Magazine show right here on the Outdoor Magazine radio network. My name is Mike Avery, and I am so glad to have you along with us. How are things going? How are you feeling? Are you healthy? I hope you're healthy. And uh, we've got the elections behind us now, so that's good. The rut is going on, even though we're looking at some warm weather. But it's just a good, a good time of year, isn't it? To be outdoors. I guess there's never really a bad time of year to be outdoors. Although, as I get older and less tough than I used to be, I'm thinking maybe February is not maybe such a good time of year to be outdoors. But that's just me. There, are, there is something going on in the outdoors here in our great state of Michigan year-round. In fact, that's one of the things I like about this state is there, there are some times when you have to decide, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to go fishing? Am I going to go hunting? Am I going to do something else? Maybe trapping. I am fascinated by trapping. I've never trapped. Uh, my dad used to trap when I was a kid. I remember these big bundles of traps hanging out in the shed, and he would, he would, I think if I remember right, he would boil them or something to get them ready for the season. I never went out with him, but I have a lot of respect for trappers. I think that trappers are the most knowledgeable outdoors men and women out there. I mean, think about this. If you are, if you're deer hunting with a gun, and a critter walks in front of you at 200 yards and you're a good enough shot, you can, you can take that animal. You can get the job done. What about bow hunting? Okay, what's your range? 20, 30, 40 yards, whatever it is. But if an animal comes within that range, you have a reasonable chance at harvesting that animal. But now think about trappers. In order for them to be successful and harvest a critter, That animal has to swim or crawl or walk into an opening, what, six by six? Or if you're talking about what some people call a leg hole trap, they got to put their foot on an inch by inch pad to spring that trap. How much knowledge and experience and expertise does it take to be able to do that? Mark Spencer is a guy who knows the world of trapping inside and out. He's the president of the Michigan Trappers and Predator Callers Association, and he's also a fur buyer, and it's a real pleasure to have him on this hour uh, of Outdoor Magazine. Mark, welcome to the show. How are you? Great. Mike, how are you? I am doing just great. Now, we're talking to you. you uh, you're a youper, aren't you, Mark? Yes, I am. I'm up in Brevoort, Michigan. And how are things? How are things in Brevoort right now? It's pretty warm right now. <laughs> right now it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> About fifty degrees and <laughs> bright sunshine. <laughs> Have you folks um, started on the trapping season yet, or is it yet to come? No, we started. Uh, well, let's see. It was last Sunday was the water trapping open, and ten days before that, uh, uh, land trapping. Opened. So, so there is a specific season. This isn't something you can go out unless it's nuisance trapping, and you, you can't do it year round. No, there's a season for it, and it usually falls in when the fur starts to prime up. Well, speaking of that, um, is there enough money in fur prices these days to make it some worth somebody's while financially, or are you doing it just for nuisance trapping, uh, trapping, and just for the sake of getting out there and having some fun? Most guys right now are doing it just to get out in the woods, have fun, and to keep up the keep up their skills. Um, the fur market right now is just like 
you know, everything else with COVID, it's down in the dumps. All right. Um, but if we can get through this, I think it'll come back stronger. Uh, there are start, there are signs overseas that make it look like they they could come back. You know, it's going to take you know maybe five years, but it's going to come back. Well, boy, I sure hope so because you know our history as Americans, let alone uh, folks in Michigan, our relationship with tra- uh, trappers is pretty strong. I mean, much of the country was uh, explored. Um, the western part of the country by trappers. I mean, you guys have been trailblazers for centuries. Yep. We've, uh, you know, most guys, you know, a lot of people don't understand what trappers are. You know, they're out and about, silent in the woods a lot. Right? And uh, so they, they notice things. You know, they notice something that's happening in the woods that a lot of people don't understand or don't, don't see. And it's it it's it is changing out there. How so? Well, you, you, more and more people are you know, like uh, are going out in the woods in UTVs or ATVs, and they're leaving their mark throughout the woods. Well, animals we go on, they, they don't like they don't like them trails that are constantly having. Uh, you know, motor vehicles running up and down it, so they move. So you have to go find them again because they're off in a silent spot. You'll see some, but they're not staying there. They're not raising their young anymore around them trails. So the more trails you get out there, out in the woods, needs less and less space for these critters to raise their young. I, I got to tell you, when I was up in the UP this fall, bear hunting around uh, Newberry and Sini, I was absolutely shocked at the number of these uh, side-by-side ATVs, how, how big it's gotten. And, and I'm sure it's been that way for a while. I just didn't know it. But it's a big deal, isn't it? Oh, yes. It's a, it's a huge deal. I mean, they're getting bigger and the faster, more bells and whistles on them, making smoother rides so they can go faster. And it's... It, 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 to me, it's a concern, you know, as as an outdoorsman about it. I have one, but I don't I don't do the trails or anymore. I use it for fishing, hunting, or trapping. That's all I use it for. It's and then pr- work around the farm. It's probably a great rig for trapping, for checking a trap line, isn't it? Oh yes, especially the one I have. It's got uh, in the winter. I put tracks on it, <laughs> so. It's basically a heated snowmobile. You were talking about um, trappers like to stay out there and keep up their skills. And there is indeed a real skill set to trapping, isn't there? Yes, there is. And that's one of the, one of the things that um, we, we as an organization are trying to fix. And that is, is that we're trying to get more and more people involved in it, especially the younger people. But one of the biggest problems is is young, young, younger people want immediate results. So it's getting harder and harder to get them to understand that it takes a while to get good at what you're doing as a trapper. And are we talking? Are we talking years? No, not really years. You you know, I mean, you 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 should be able to catch something right fairly soon. But you're not going to get something every night, and that's what a lot of the younger people now are wanting. They want immediate results, and they want always want results. And that's something we're we're trying to reinstill is that this is a an occupation that doesn't have immediate results, but once you gain the results, you feel a lot better because now you. Uh, not outsmarted the animal, but you did something that he wasn't expecting or she wasn't expecting. Well, even for an experienced trapper, aren't there going to be a lot of times when you walk up on a set and and nothing's touched it, right? Yep. <laughs> Many times. <laughs> yeah, I, I think about the number of hours, like like for you, 
I don't know how. Once the season gets kicked into full, uh, you know, in full swing, how how big will your trap line be? Well, my my trap line depends on you know I'm because I'm not. Uh, normally, I, I have any anywhere from twenty five to fifty traps out. But if the, if I know a price, the price is going to be good, and where I can make you know I don't lose money and gas and everything running around, I've had up to 300 traps out. Wow. 300 traps like a full-time job, isn't it? Basically, yep. Basically, uh, you run run one line one day, run the other line the next day, and, and then skin and uh, flesh or freeze at night. So... Start off at six in the morning, and you usually get into bed about ten thirty, eleven o'clock at night. <laughs> We're talking about trapping with Mark Spencer of the Michigan Trappers and Predator Callers Association. Their website is mtpca.com. Mtpca.com. Talking about an outdoor tra- uh, tradition that goes back uh, what hun- thousands of years. Trappers, I think it's. It's a fascinating outdoor adventure to me. I've never done it, but I have much respect, and I love talking about it. So we'll take a break here in the Outdoor Magazine Show. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more with Mark about trapping today, the types of traps, the misconceptions, uh, and, and, and the process. How do you go out and successfully catch a critter in a trap? The folks at Yider Insurance Group know you have lots of money invested in your hunting and fishing gear, and they want you to be protected. The Yider family has been in the insurance business for more than 75 years, and they build a reputation for taking great care of their customers. As a full-service agency featuring auto owners insurance, Yider can insure your fishing and hunting gear, your boat, snowmobile, ATV, and trailer, just about everything you depend on for your outdoor adventures. Yider also specializes in protecting outdoor-related businesses, From fishing guides to shooting ranges, anything for the great outdoors. The folks at Yider can help you because they're hunters and anglers themselves, and they know what we need from an insurance company. For more info, go to their website, huntingandfishinginsurance.com. That's huntingandfishinginsurance.com. Or call them toll-free at 800-975-6473. I trust the Yider Group and auto owners for all my insurance needs. Because with Yider and auto owners, you've got friends in the outdoor insurance business. Everybody needs to put gas in their tank, so the next time, why not save money with Fuel Rewards from Forward Shell Convenience Stores? With Fuel Rewards, you'll save at least five cents a gallon on every fill-up at the 26 Forward Shell Convenience Stores. Plus, you can earn additional savings with select products and special offers at those Forward Stores. You can save 20, 30, even 40 cents a gallon. And the more you use Fuel Rewards, the more you can save. I use the Fuel Rewards program every time I stop by a Forward Shell convenience store. And you can too. Go to FuelRewards.com. That's FuelRewards.com. You can also download the Fuel Rewards app on your phone. The Fuel Rewards program at your local Forward Shell convenience store. A great way to save money every time you fill up. To learn more, check out ForwardConvenience.com. That's ForwardConvenience.com. Food plots are a big deal these days, and nobody knows food plots better than the folks at Michigan-based Killer Food Plots. Company owner Nick Percy has worked hard to develop premier whitetail habitat for almost three decades. That experience, combined with expertise in building healthy soil and choosing the right seed, will produce the results you're looking for. KFP's natural-based organics fusion fertilizer and retain moisture and nutrient-absorbing pellets can give you the edge in creating food plots to attract and keep deer on your property. Check out their website, KillerFoodPlots.com. That's KillerFoodPlots.com. Killer Food Plots can help you get your soil where it needs to be to produce lots of healthy, great-tasting food for wildlife and cover crops to screen your plots and even direct the deer where you want them. This year, take your food plots to the next level with Killer Food Plots. KillerFoodPlots.com. It's a complicated world we live in. Right about now, I'll bet your head is spinning like a tornado with news and opinions and conflicting do this and don't do that recommendations. 
Some days, you just want to throw up your hands, go to the woods, and stay there. And you know, that's not a bad idea. Jay's Sporting Goods encourages you to get back to your roots. Do some simple, traditional things for a while. In Michigan's great outdoors, space is one thing we have plenty of. So put as much social distance as you like between you and everyone else, including all your social media pals who somehow just recently became experts on every topic. And one more thing, before you head out, head into Jay's Sporting Goods. Because even though there are shortages of a lot of things these days, Jay's has just what you need to make the most of your escape to our beautiful wide open spaces. It's the gateway to social distancing the way God intended. Jay's Sporting Goods, Claire and Gaylord. You can hear the Outdoor Magazine show in uh, Sheboygan on Big Country Gold, WCBY, AM and FM, 1240 AM, 100.7 FM. And you can hear us in Flint on Super Talk uh, 1570 WWCK. This segment of Outdoor Magazine is brought to you by the Hunter Safety System. I won't go up a tree without a full body harness on. And I would encourage you to to seriously think about the same thing. There are two types of tree stand hunters, those who have fallen and those who will. Sooner or later, you're going to get an equipment failure. You're going to slip off a step. You're going to have uh, a strap break or maybe just lose your balance. But if you're wearing a full body harness, you're not going to hit the ground. You might scare yourself, but you're not going to hurt yourself. I like Hunter Safety System products because these guys are, uh, to be honest, they're friends of mine. I've known them for a long time, but they were the originators of this category. They were the first ones that took that complicated, tangled safety harness that came, comes with all the tree stands, which will do the job if you put it on. And they came up with this vest system that was easy to use and absolutely safe. I also strongly recommend you uh, couple this with some kind of a lifeline. Now, a lifeline is basically nothing more from a rope that's tied around the tree above your stand. It goes down to the ground. It's got a, a carabiner on it uh, attached to a, with a Prusik knot. You clip into that carabiner on the ground level. You slide the Prusik knot up the rope as you go, so you are tied into the line, into the system the entire time there. You stay hooked into the tree while you're hunting, and when you come back down, you slide it down. Safe as can be. That's the best way to do it. Firearm season coming up. Um, uh, Christmas not too far around the corner. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of good reasons to go out and get somebody a hunter safety system harness or vest. Check them out online at huntersafetysystem.com. That's huntersafetysystem.com. If you don't like hunter safety system for some reason, I can't imagine why you wouldn't, but please wear somebody's full body harness. But I like Hunter Safety System, huntersafetysystem.com. While you're looking at huntersafetysystem.com online, I would ask you to check out my website, mikeeveryoutdoors.com, and this website, mtpca.com. That's the website of the Michigan Trappers and Predator Callers Association. Mark Spencer is the president of that group, and he is a hardcore trapper himself with us on the Outdoor Magazine phone line. Mark, how many years have you been trapping? I was trapping when I was young with my with my father back in the 70s. And I w- went in the Navy for 21 years, and I didn't get a chan- much chance to trap in then. But when I got out, when I retired in 96, I started back full-time with him. And then when he passed away, I kept it going. Well, first of all, thank you for your service. And Mm -hmm. it is, uh, and what you're talking about right there with this trapping being part of our history, for your family, it's an intimate part of your family history too, isn't it? Yes, it is. My my father's family has been trapping since back in the 1800s. Wow. (laughs) That is very cool. Please tell me you've got some pictures, some of those old time pictures of somebody in your family trapping. Actually, uh, there was a fire, and we don't have that brand new picture. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I got I, some of my dad, but that was it. You know, that would be back in 
probably the 60s would be the oldest ones I have left. Well, I, I think it's great that you have stepped up to become president of this group that right now, from what I can tell from the outside, I mean, your goal is to promote and encourage trapping in Michigan, right? Actually, promoting trapping in Michigan and throughout the U.S. Yeah, but we're talking about the Michigan Trappers and Predator College yep. Association, yep. so you're, you're so we, thinking about yeah, Michigan. We, yes, we, do, we, we mainly do Michigan, but trappers are one community. So if you attack one trapper in some other state, you're attacking us in Michigan. And you guys so have certainly been attacked over the years. Yes, we have. Just by many, many different organizations. Well, uh, let's talk. All right, let's talk about some of the um, some of the complaints. A foothold trap is inhumane. I mean, I know you can dispel every one of these, Mark, but let's talk about these for a minute. Okay. Like the the, the types of traps. You guys have gone to great lengths to to come up with traps and to modify some of the older style traps to be more humane. Tell me about that. Well, one of the things that we've uh, petitioned, you know, with, through the DNR that is to outlaw the tooth traps that you see the old time big tooth traps. You can't you can't use those no more to set traps. You know, they're they're wall hangers basically now. Collector traps is what we call them. We've done that. We've uh, went to. Uh, the things where some of the bigger body grip traps, we've um, limited where where they could be set and how they could be set so that they're more humane, so the, the, the dispatches the animal quicker and faster. Um, and it has we have less chance to catch in incidental catches. Well, how do you do that? That's a question I have. If you're setting like a coyote trap or something, how do you, how in the world would you keep a dog out of that trap or, or, or whatever? Well, the thing is with, 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 with uh, leg hole traps like that, what you do is, one, you, you minimize the size of the trap, all right? You don't need a great big trap to catch a coyote, all right? So the smaller the trap... One area, that means you've got a smaller smaller area that the dog can step in, all right? So you have to be a little bit more careful and uh, a little bit sneakier for the coyote for him to step in it. The other thing is, is the smaller trap is a little, puts less pressure on the paw of the, the animal so that if in case you catch an incidental one, you can usually let it go without any uh, uh Excuse me, my throat got to the door. That's right. No, um, no, no damage, right? I mean, these things are not designed no to close on a leg and bust a bust a uh, a bone like people think, no. right? No, they're not designed to, to, to cut the, cut the leg in half, right? Because one, you're damaging the fur, and when you uh, if you do something like that, that stresses the animal out, and that has a tendency to hurt the fur the amount of stress that, 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 that affects the animals that way. So that's why you don't want you don't want to hurt them. You don't want to stress them out. You want them to be there. Also, if you, we want to make sure they're alive and functional, that we can let them go. If, if it's if it's a small one, we don't need that. You know? So we, we try to let them go. And if it's not in season, he's alive, we let him go. Isn't it common to walk up on a trap and find, if you were successful and you got an animal in that trap, to find it just laying there, just waiting to see what's going to happen? Yep. Normally you walk up to them and, you know, they'll bite, you know, uh, crash around there for a little while, but after a while when they know they can't get out, they'll be just laying there. Like, okay, come and let me out. And that's got to be kind of exciting. I don't care how many years you've been doing that. You walk up on a coyote or a fox or whatever in a trap, that's kind of a cool experience. Yes, it is. It, it, you know, you, you have a sense of pride, and it is really kind of neat to walk up there and see the animal. You were talking, to about uh, things that you do to make trapping as humane as possible and to put trappers in as positive a light as possible. Um, 
you, you also have a set schedule, right? I mean, by law, you have to check these traps a given amount of time, but I know you guys would do it anyway, right? I mean, is it, yeah. is it hourly? Is it daily? What's, what's the system here, Mark? It depends on, like, in lower Michigan, it's uh, daily. In the upper Michigan, it's uh, 48, or two, every, every other day, 48 hours. We have to check traps. And, uh, but most guys check them daily up here unless they're running a huge, huge trap line, which most of us ain't anymore, or weather. You know, we get a two, two and a half feet of snow, then uh, you're not going to have anything caught in the trap. Yeah. In, in, you know, I'm thinking about this, um, a, a coyote or a fox trap. You talked about, you know, you downsize it so there's less room for the animal to actually put its foot in. How, when you got thousands of acres of woods... How do you know where to set a trap that will get an animal to step on that pad in that trap? Well, one of the things is experience, okay? Because you're going to miss more than you catch. And you use some kind of lure, land lure, bait lure, right, to bring that animal to that set. Um, If you put a good land lure out, them coyotes can smell it for miles, and they'll come to that scent, that scent, and then they'll start hunting around for what's making that scent. So that bring that brings the critters in to where you where you have traps set. What's the hardest animal to trap in Michigan, in your opinion? Um, I would think it would be the coyote. If it, if it ain't a coyote, it's a trap. It's a trap wise beaver. Why trap the coyote? Why, why the coyote? First of all, are they just that? I hate to use a human term on an animal, but are they that smart? And that, I don't know if about that smart, but they're uh, they're very white, uh, scared. Not scared, but uh, very very afraid of things that aren't exactly what it was when uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. So. All right, so when they, they get really skittish. They have a super good sense of smell. Okay, so you have to you have, can't you can't leave any kind of uh, scent around. All right, that's probably true. That's of, probably true of uh, trapping all critters, right? You have to be very uh, scent conscious. Some are like, but like uh, with bobcats, it's not really not really so with bobcat. Hmm. They're they're more curious. They're just like a cat, a regular house cat. They're very very curious. So if you make the make the thing uh, a little bit different, you'll get the cat to come to it. Because he's a curiosity killed the cat. Curious. <laughs> That's what I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> We've been thinking, you know, the curiosity. He'll come to that. He'll come to something if it's something different or something moving around in there. He'll he'll come and look at it. What, what what's in there? Uh, and you're, and right. he's and he's going to find out with you guys around. Mark, listen, I can you can you stick around for a few more minutes? I got to take a break, but I, I'd like to talk to you some more if sure. you can. Yeah, I can. Perfect. No We're talking with Mark Spencer of the Michigan Trappers and Predator Callers Association. The website mtpca.com, mtpca.com. Trapping, part of our Michigan history and tradition, and Mark knows it very well. You can hear the Outdoor Magazine show in Houghton Lake on two stations. The Twister 92.1 WTWS and Powerhouse FM station 98.5 WUPS. And you can hear it uh, in Saginaw on our flagship stations, News Radio 790 WSGW and uh, WSGW FM 790 and 100.5 FM. Now I say flagship. As always, with no disrespect to any of our affiliate stations, but I'm in the studios right now. have a great relationship with these guys. Uh, Charlie Rudin here doing a wonderful job, as always. He he turns and waves. The people are lined up. They can't come in the building because of COVID, but they're lined up in the parking lot, and they're they're chanting, Charlie, Charlie. And he's very gracious with his uh, uh, acceptance of that applause. 
Uh, we're talking right now with Mark Spencer, who is the uh, president of the Michigan Trappers and Predator Callers Association, mtpca.com. Mark, we've talked about some of the different methods of trapping, how hard it is to learn to become a trapper. So here's the question, and how do we start? Where do we get started? Well, the best, the best way for a person to start trapping is to take a trapper's education course. We're starting them back up. You can, you know, look look on our website or the DNR's website. We'll have these courses on them as we start doing them. Um, you can do do most ninety percent of it is online now, so you can just do it online and then uh, do a field day, sort of like the hunter education. Yeah, yeah, hunter safety course. Um, that's a good way to start. The second second way, if you you know don't want to do it that way or something, is to go to a trappers conventions. Like we didn't have any this year due to COVID, but we're going to start them back up next year. Uh, the MTPCA's convention will be in August at Everett, Michigan. Um, you can check on the website. We'll have the dates, and you know, when once we get a little bit closer there, they'll have the different uh, demonstrations. And that's the best way to learn, you know, tricks of the trade. You guys doing these demonstrations are experienced trappers, and they don't mind showing. Some of the tricks of the trade. Some of the tricks. <laughs> some of the tricks. <laughs> Trappers. There's there some of them. You know, you, you have to learn on your own because what what works for some guy will not work for everybody. Well, so that, that's what, a what good they point. Do yeah. and then, yep, you look at what they do, you try it, and if it don't quite work, you just modify it a little bit and maybe it'll work. The, th- the thing about trapping that I have so much respect for is you put all these hours on the trap line out there in some pretty rough conditions. You catch something. You bring it back to the house, the shed, the barn, or whatever. Your job's not over yet. Oh, that, that, that was the easy job, catching it. Now the hard job, putting it up. And there's a lot of guys out there that don't do that. They'll sell it in the green to different fur buyers to put it up, or they'll hire somebody to put it up. Because that's the hard job. Because and that's and that's where, you know, let's say let's say you've got a twenty five dollar coon, all right. If you put it up all right and everything, it's a twenty five dollar coon. That same coon, if you don't put it up right, is a two dollar coon. Wow. And that's that, that's where 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 you want to go to these conventions to learn uh, from the demonstrations. I know at, uh, all three all all three ones we have up in. Uh, in Michigan, you know, the UP trappers, the Northern Great Lakes for Harvesters, and MTPCA trappers. There's three conventions in Michigan usually every year, and there's fur pelting and putting up almost all the time, constantly going on. So what, what's, in, what's involved in that process? You get it home. How do you, how do you take care of it? First of all, you usually, hang, let's say it's a water, a water animal, like a mushrat, beaver, mink, or something. You hang them, let it dry, right? You really don't want to do them real wet, uh, the fur wet, wet because it, it'll mess you up. And you basically, like, uh, depending on the critter, you'll skin it. All right, some skin it inside out so that it's cased, and then some are flat, opened up. Beaver is one of them. Um, badgers are one. Um, and then you have to flush it get the fat off then you put it on a stretcher depending on what kind of animal it is and you let it dry and you'll have to wipe it down every day for you know anywhere depending on what kind of uh, um, building you have where it's drying it could be anywhere from two days to five days but a lot, a lot depends on the humidity in the building and the heat um, and once it's dried, then you can take it off the stretcher and you hang it in a cool, dry place until you either sell it at an auction, you turn it into the Canadian auction house, or you sell it to a fur buyer. Hmm. A lot of work involved in here for not a lot of money, and I see why, you know, it's, it's, it's a labor of love, right? That's right. There is a lot of, a very, very, like for a beaver, for an inexperienced or a new a new trapper, for an inexperienced beaver, it'll take him an hour to skin and flesh that and stretch that beaver. Okay, so he has an hour per beaver. Mm. I just put up. Once he gets good at it, 
it's still going to be at least 20 minutes. <laughs> you still got to put the work in. I don't care how many years you've been doing it, eh, Mark? That's right. I mean, now watch my dad. My dad was very good at putting up beaver, all right? And it was at least 20 minutes. Hmm. At least 20 minutes. And a lot of times, and it's because, you know, when you're meticulous and you want, want it to look good, it takes you a while to get it right. I have so much respect for you guys, Mark. You know, trappers, um, what you represent to our state, what you're doing today, uh, the website mtpca.com, mtpca.com. Have a great season, Mark. I look forward to talking with you again soon. Take a break here in the Outdoor Magazine Show. Wild Game Chef extraordinaire Dave Miner would usually wrap up each week's show, but uh, he's a little under the weather this week, so we're going to we're gonna uh, wrap it up uh, with some thoughts from me coming up after the break right here on Outdoor Magazine. By now, you know all about AnglerQuest boats, the center console design, binary wall system, and smooth ride with lots of room have anglers convinced a pontoon can be a great fishing rig. And the folks at Michigan-based AnglerQuest continue to make their boats even better. Now the signature rocket launcher arch can tilt down. That's great for high water levels, trailering, and storage. Also, there's a new panfish model that's perfect for smaller inland lakes. The popular Pro Troll models continue to dominate big water for walleye, salmon, and trout, and the family fish can keep everyone happy, whether fishing or cruising. All Angler Quest boats are designed by fishermen and made in Michigan by skilled craftsmen using the latest technology. You can learn more online at anglerquestpontoons.com. That's anglerquestpontoons.com. With more models, upgraded designs, plenty of features, and bigger outboards, this is the perfect year for you to join the Angler Quest family. At Garber Chevrolet in Midland, Saginaw, Linwood, Caro, and now Chesney, we're better for a reason. Like Garber's low price guarantee, get incredible everyday low prices on a new Chevy Equinox, Silverado, Traverse, or Trax. Think you found a better deal somewhere else? Bring it to us, and we will beat it. Getting more options and choices is always better, and Garber's combined inventory is the Great Lakes Bay region's largest selection of new Chevrolets. Browse online at GarberChevrolet.com. Then use our buy from home feature to purchase entirely online. And Garber Chevrolet's customer service is in a class of its own. We always put your needs first. Better prices, better selection. There's a reason why you'll do better at Garber Chevrolet in Midland, Saginaw, Linwood, Carrow, and now Chesney. Home with a low price guarantee. Online at GarberChevrolet.com. Chevy, find new roads. You'll do better at Garber. Have you tried the Mike Avery Hunter Sticks from Michigan Brand Meats? They feature two of my favorites, elk and pepper, and I think they taste great. I've been working with the Grillo family of Michigan Brand for a few years now, and I couldn't be happier. Michigan Brand is family-owned and based right here in Michigan, and they make lots of great products. From jerky, sausage, and those Hunter Sticks to their famous Michigan Brand hams, you can't go wrong with Michigan Brand meats. Plus, Michigan Brand can process your boned-out wild game, too. Check out the website, michiganbrand.net, for more info. That's michiganbrand.net. You can buy the Mike Avery Hunter Sticks on that website. Plus, you can get them at Jay's Sporting Goods, all forward convenience stores, Jack's Fruit Markets, and many other great stores, too. There's a complete list on the website again. That's michiganbrand.net for the Mike Avery Hunter Sticks, the outstanding Michigan brand hams, and lots more. michiganbrand.net. Security Credit Union wants to thank you for helping to make them one of Michigan's fastest growing credit unions. Check out Security's Debit Rewards Program, where you can earn points just by using your debit or titanium rewards credit card. Redeem those points for great gifts and merchandise. Or how about the Save to Win account? That's a Security Credit Union account that gives you all the benefits of a traditional savings account, plus the chance to win big. Every $25 you deposit into this share certificate earns you an entry into the monthly and quarterly drawings. The more you save, the more chances to earn. Up to 10 entries per month. You'll build up your savings, earn interest and dividends, and have a chance at multiple prizes. And remember, Security Credit Union loves to work with outdoors men and women, and they can help you with your next outdoor adventure. Check them out online at securitycu.org. That's securitycu.org. Federally insured by the NCUA.
Welcome back to Outdoor Magazine. So glad to have you along with us and thankful to the folks at Wilds Plumbing and Heating for uh, helping to uh, support the show. This segment brought to you by them. Plumbing, heating, air conditioning, sump pumps, ductwork cleaning, you name it. Everything to keep you warm, dry, comfortable in your house. The folks at Wilds can take care of it. Uh, check them out online at wildsplumbingandheating.com. That's wildsplumbingandheating.com. Whenever something on the uh, mechanics of our house uh, needs some work, that's who I call the folks at Wilds. Wildsplumbingandheating.com is the website. <clears throat> like I say, uh, normally, Wild Game Chef Extraordinary Dave Miner would join us, and he has done it. Oh, my goodness. When I think back on the number of years that Dave has been involved uh, in the radio show, and it's been a lot of them. I can think of maybe only two times that he missed being with us. In fact, there was one time that he called in from the parking lot of the hospital, sitting outside ER. He was having a heart attack, and he was still on the line with me. And I didn't even know what was going on until after the fact. That's the kind of guy that Dave is. So, uh, but he will be back with us next week. I am confident of that with another great wild game recipe. Charlie said, why don't you give one of your favorite recipes? <laughs> you, you wouldn't want one of my recipes. My favorite recipe probably involves takeout. I'm not much of a, although something on the grill, I can, you know, I can, I can make stuff on the grill. In fact, I was talking to Nick Grillo the other day and he gave me some, um, I didn't look real close to see what they Some brats, I think they were. And those I will put on the grill. And those will taste good because you can't screw those up, right? If you put Michigan brand products on the grill, you can't screw it up. It's like the bear brats. The brats, well, from Michigan brand that I get made out of my bear. Obviously, if they're bear brats, they're made from a bear. You put those on the grill, you can't go wrong. And just because it's getting to be cold out, although right now Mother Nature is throwing a warm spell at us, doesn't mean you can't still cook on the grill, right? As long as you can get to the grill, as long as the snow will let you get to the grill, you can cook on the grill. But this weather right now is just crazy, and I'm wondering how this is going to affect the deer hunting right now. I mean, normally right now, right, the rut is in full swing, uh, going into firearm season. Um, will the warm weather have an effect on that? Um, I'm thinking it minimal, maybe, because when those bucks get all full of testosterone, they're going to do what they're going to do. My hunting this year, my deer hunting this year has been interesting. And I, I made it a goal of my, I made it a goal for myself to try to get back into deer hunting. And I, I think I'm succeeding at that. I've been in a ground blind or a tree stand quite a few times now, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, a, a lot is is the desire to take an animal what it was before is the passion what it was before no but that's okay because I'm at a different point in my life I'm 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 getting older I'm not done but I'm I'm getting older so I'm going to look at things in a different way um, and it's a good thing it's a good thing I'm not judging the success of my hunt on the animals I take because I have yet to see a deer while deer hunting during the archery season. I did see a couple does back in September in the early doe season. Didn't get a shot at them. But I have, this is almost unbelievable. I have yet to see a deer in the woods during the archery season that started October 1st. <laughs> and actually, that's okay. Would I like to shoot a big doe with my recurve? Absolutely. Absolutely. Would I love to see a nice buck running a doe past my stand? Absolutely. And I'm not done yet. I mean, I, I will, depending on what the schedule looks like, I'm going to try to get out here again in the next few days. Um, and I will hunt the opening day of firearm deer season. I won't go out in the morning because it's on a Sunday. I will go out uh, Sunday evening, though. At least that's my plan right now. And see what happens. Uh, my grandson Carter, though, we're having uh, that big doe that he shot. I talked to Nick again at Michigan Brand. We're going to have him make up some um, some summer sausage and some jerky. Carter's very excited about that. And if, listen, if I could trade, if I could trade never getting uh, another deer again in my life 
for my grandkids to shoot deer or even my son James, I'm okay with that. I mean, nobody's put that in front of me. I don't think that's an option. Avery, you've got to give up deer so somebody else can shoot them. I don't think it works that way, but if it did, I'd be okay with that. Uh, Wednesday Night Lives, I hope you will join me for those every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, on Mike Avery Outdoors on the Facebook page and the YouTube channel and on Twitter as well, where we're giving away a Michigan brand ham for the holidays. We will do that through the first of the year. And congrats to my friend David Martin and his beautiful bride, Chrissy. I was able to uh, perform the wedding ceremony for them last week. The ceremony was beautiful. I thought it went very well. Uh, Mother Nature cooperated, and it was just a lot of fun. And David and his best man were both in their, um, do we call them dress blues, their formal Army uniform. It was very, very cool, very, very nice. And before I forget, a shout-out to my friends at Reader Landscaping. Reader can take care of your lawn and property because it's your nature and our nurture. Fall cleanup now. They were just at my place, finished up. It looks beautiful. Thank you, folks, from Reader, ReaderLandscaping.com, ReaderLandscaping.com. You can always reach me. Mike at MikeAveryOutdoors.com. Make sure to check out the website, MikeAveryOutdoors.com. I hope you have a chance to enjoy this beautiful weather. Get out on the water, in the woods. And if not, you can always join me online. And have a great week. Hey, we're through the election, so that part's good, right? Uh, um, And listen, I'll talk to you next time right here on Outdoor Magazine. Outdoor Magazine.